We grew up in Citronelle together, and uh, our, my house was in a pecan orchard, and uh, wasn't too many days we went over there playing wiffle ball uh, out there in that pecan orchard. Uh, of course, I always loved football and uh, been a sports fan his whole life and mine too. And uh, so we were close uh, in that respect, you know, with football and, and everything. And uh, of course, when I after I graduated, he was behind me in football and I was there uh, supporting him and uh, uh, his endeavor there. And uh, I remember when he was a senior, uh, he had gone to transfer up to Wesleyan uh, Christian Academy. And uh, uh, one of the biggest disappointments in his career was he got his collarbone broke about two thirds of the way through the season. And uh, I remember having to be there for him during that because it was a painful time in his life, uh, both physically and emotionally because of not being able to finish the season out. Uh, we played softball together all our lives. Uh, been on softball teams after we graduated high school and uh, travel all over the place playing softball together. We've always been more like brothers than first cousins. and. Uh, that's kind of strange, I guess, because of the age difference, uh, almost 10 years age difference uh, between us. And of course, we, our life has always revolved in the early years about uh, growing up out on, uh, camping on Dog River. And uh, of course, there's tons of stories involved there. But uh, one of the funniest ones uh, to me, uh, when he was a young boy, uh, we were camping out there with his dad. and. Uh, his dad was pretty strict, and uh, Mark and I was always goofing around, you know, uh, making fun of people and uh, having fun and uh, going through the camp there. And Mark was jumping up to see how close he could come to his dad's lantern without hitting it. And his dad told him, quit doing that. And of course, Mark's a little bit stubborn, and uh, like the rest of us, and uh, he tried it one more time knocked the camera, I mean the lantern down, and uh, I think that was one of the worst beatings I've ever witnessed in my life, was <laughs> his dad got through tearing him up about that. As far as D, <laughs> the influence on, on all of us, I guess, would be respect, maybe a little fear. We seldom ever was around D, maybe at dinner, or, you know, he was gone most of the time. Our influence mainly was, was, was Nanny. You know, she influenced all of us, and, and to this very day, you know, I, I love for Nanny is just unconditional. It's just uh, unbelievable. You know, as a grandmother, words can't, can't you can't even put it in in words what what Nanny meant to all of us, all, all the cousins, every one of us, to this very day. And as far as Mark, there's no doubt, him, his mother, and Nanny was by far where he is today. You know. Early teenage years, like I said I was five years older and 
time and see I was 18 and graduating and getting married and uh, his, his teenage years didn't really cross paths that much until later on in life. But, you know, we would see each other and visit each other. When he first got married, we would, uh, Mary Lou and I would, you know, we would go out and get, go to each other's homes and just really enjoyed his, his company like I do today, you know. He, uh, he's the love of my life. Mark and I love Alabama football and always have since we were boys or watching the games when the national championship game with Barry Bryant years ago. And we've always loved Alabama football and we love getting together and fellowshipping uh, at the game, after the game, during the game. And I hope that it'll always be that way and I, I feel like it will. Mark is more like, like my brother because my brother was seven years older than me and Mark didn't have a brother and we grew up together and played together and loved football and uh, just wonderful childhood memories at Nanny's house and like I said he, he, he's just like the brother that and I don't know I, I feel like Mark uh, feels the same way towards me that, that uh, we're just like brother. I consider him a brother as close as cousin could possibly be and I, I say more more like a brother.
You know, us living here in, 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 in Nanny and uh, a lot of my, Mark's life was, was, was at Nanny's house. You know, they lived there a lot of years and we were just back and forth. I mean, you know, it, it was, uh, of course, Mark would come down sometime and I'd run him off or tell him to go back home and to go back to Nanny's. And uh, my, Mama always said I was mean to him. And she, <laughs> she'd wonder why he wanted to play with me. And of course, naturally, he said, because I love him, you know, he just, I always wanted to be around me, and, and uh, of course I loved him the same way, but that's just my nature to, to, to do him that way. <laughs> I didn't really mean no harm by it, but I guess that was the way I did a lot of people, you know. You know just being me. <laughs> you don't have to edit that. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Food just about everything. I think Mark, <laughs> Mark loves lima beans because he grew up with lima beans, bologna sandwiches like I love, uh, fried bologna, uh, gumbo for sure. Of course, we didn't have gumbo when we was young, but we love it now. But I guess things we just grew up with, you know, Nanny's uh, tea cakes just melt in your mouth, and a, and a sweet potato laying on the stove, and uh, maybe a slice of. Uh, Thick bacon like it was always cooked in the mornings and left there all day and for anybody wanted to come by and get it, but probably what we grew up with, with means more than, than what we eat right now. Oh, Nanny's tea cakes was so, oh, mm, we all loved their tea cakes. It's just like a sugar cookie, you know, it's just a simple homemade, what you'd say sugar cookie. Maybe it didn't have that much sugar on it, just flour and maybe butter and just, just a basic, you know, just a basic. A vanilla cookie and it was just uh we just loved them everybody tries to copy them but you can't ever copy nanny's tea cakes <laughs> it's kind of like your mother's fried chicken or your grandmother's fried chicken you can try to copy but you can never get it quite down pat like like they cooked it you know <laughs> I remember most uh, about the river, uh, we played washers. Uh, his, his dad uh, kind of, I guess, invented the game of washers, uh, Sidney Hobbs. But uh, Mark and I would always team up and try to beat his dad and my dad. And uh, we very seldom did. So one time we decided on a strategy and we went and tied turbans around our head. And we told them that we had to import some Arabs in to beat them. And of course, we didn't beat them even like that, but that was one of the highlights of our summers that year was uh, trying to beat them. Uh, uh, in our early uh, adulthood, uh, it's kind of like our roles were reversed. Like I said, he's always he's younger than me, but he kind of became my mentor. Uh, I was a little on the wild side after I graduated from high school and then subsequently flunked out of college after two or three years while I actually quit. But Mark was always there for me during those times and was kind of my uh, emotional or spiritual mentor, if you want to say that. Uh, but one, always, even back in those days, uh, his love for Jesus uh, shone through and uh, manifested itself in, in everything he did and his care for me and, and my friends and uh, 
and all of that. And then uh, as we became adult, I just, when I think of Mark, he's always been a provider. He's been a provider for his family. Uh, and he's been a pastor. He's been a pastor to, uh, to me and so many other people that's not going to his church, just friends, uh, some of my friends that were needing help at the time. Mark's always been there for all of us uh, outside of his church family, just friends and family. And uh, he's been there uh, for, for so many people. I, and I don't know a whole lot of stories about him and his church family, but I do know for a fact that I have witnessed him borrowing money from the bank to help people uh, that needed help and uh, with no regard to whether he's ever going to get paid back and probably didn't in most of those cases but there's no telling how many times he's done that so he's just got a heart for people and uh, it shows in everything he does. And just just going to the wedding, I, I do uh, remember that and how happy they was and and uh, how proud I was for him. You know, I didn't really know Karen that, that that well at the time, but I knew he had picked a good good girl. And like I said, I was proud of him. And of course, I'd been married five seven years by then. You know, and already had my uh, two kids, and it didn't really. After they got married, you know, we, we like I said, we started associating around together and going out to eat and, and different things. But as far as his marriage, it's, uh, it was, I know probably the saddest part with him was Nanny not being there, you know. And I'm, I'm thankful that following my mama's footsteps and, and, and Daddy and, and, and Mark and, and his parents and and just as far as that goes, Nanny and Dee. Now we know how Dee was and what, what all Dee's done. But, you know, uh, Nanny was, uh, she was loyal to him, no matter what. And she loved him, no matter what. We, we take our vows very serious. And, you know, I guess I would be like a lonesome dove if uh, anything would ever happen to Mary Lou. Because there's no, nobody to take her place. There never would be anybody to take her place. Kind of like Mama. And, uh, when Daddy died, or uh, Mary C. When she had died, you know, just uh, that's that's who uh, we chose our life to be with, and whether they're here or not, that's the only one for me. And, and I feel like Mark would be, would be the same way, and all of us, you know. And thank God for it. better place if it, if it was full of Markovs. <laughs> More than one. <laughs> That's what's wrong now because we don't have enough Markovs. Uh, we have good people, but uh, Mark is, uh, even even when when we was young, when they, I, we, we maybe did some mischievous things. 
um, Mark would follow me and maybe do something that we shouldn't be doing. Nothing that I would call that bad, just something maybe kids would do. But as far as uh, Mark knew right from wrong from day one, and uh, uh, I never tried to lead him down the wrong path. And if I did, he wouldn't have went anyway. So, <laughs> so uh, like I said, Mark's always been a, a fine young man, a blessed young boy. I can't say enough about him. And I feel like every, everybody that knows Mark or come in contact with Mark or cousins or kin or whoever all feels the same way. To him, because the world would be much better off if there was a bunch of us like him, uh, because his dedication uh, to his calling uh, to serve Christ has been uh, one that I've not found in any too many other people anywhere even since he was a young man. And uh, he, he, he's been an a exemplary servant for more years than I can even remember. Yeah, he's got a good singing voice. Uh, way better than, you know, like uh, some of the cousins or some of them that think they got a singing voice. Uh, I know uh, I couldn't carry a, a tune in a bucket. Charlie couldn't. Roger always professed to be a singer, but he was probably no better than us. But Mark has got a good voice. He's got a real good voice. And he loves to sing. Now I love, uh, I love singing, I love gospel music, I love old fashioned gospel music and I go around singing and humming and whistling all the time but as far as singing in public, you know, <laughs> I might just be moving my lips because I, I can't sing. <laughs> he, but as far, as far as somebody like Roger, he, 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 he would have sung at a, a, a Super Bowl or whatever thinking he could sing. <laughs> uh, but he didn't care, you know, that, that was Roger. Before I found the Lord, uh, I was living in rebellion for many years of my life. And uh, Mark was always there, not just for me, but with me in a lot of cases. And uh, he would uh, go in places with me that I know that he didn't even want to go in just to take care of me if he could. And so there's been, there's been several times that he's saved me from probably doing things that I didn't want to do uh, just because he was uh, trying to be my friend and brother and, uh, and a mentor. It's hard to think of someone that much younger than you being your mentor, but uh, that's just the way he is.
And then there's uh, my mom, uh, and I was, she was on her deathbed in the hospital. Uh, the doctor had told us that uh, she didn't have very long to live and uh, to call my dad because he was in Citronelle and she was in the hospital in Mobile. And so I'd call my dad and he was on the way to the hospital and then uh, my wife and I talked and uh, I told her, I said, I gotta call Mark and uh, get him to come down here and pray with us. And, and so I called him on the cell phone and uh, he answered me from the elevator. He was already in the hospital, uh, headed up uh, the elevator and uh, he came in and uh, I remember his words like they were yesterday. He prayed over my mom that uh, the Lord would give her one more chance to accept Jesus as her Savior because she had never done that. And uh, we left and went back to the waiting room and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, go back. And uh, so we went back in and I'll make a long story short, my mom opened her eyes and uh, I was able to ask her about accepting Jesus as her Savior and she did that on her deathbed. And uh, I'll be forever grateful to the Lord for that, but I'm also grateful for Mark, to Mark for uh, coming in there with that last minute prayer for me and making us all feel so comfortable with the situation. So um, those are just some of the things that uh, have happened in our lifetime over the years. And uh, we're just still as close as brothers. We just don't get to spend as much time together as brothers might get to and because of the call of our ministries. But he's always there. Uh, he's a phone call away. And uh, I suspect one day if I go before he does, I don't suspect I know that he'll be doing my funeral. And uh, that's just how much I think of him. Well, places uh, was in common for us is uh, Dog River. Uh, I mean, because we both grew up out there. Uh, our parents grew up out there, and our grandparents uh, out there. That place, uh, we've grown up out there since we were young, and we still have places out there, both of us do, and we still like to get together out there. And so one of the traditions is is getting together out there. Of course, Thanksgiving is a tradition that we usually, all the family comes together. And of course, as the older ones die off, that tradition is harder and harder to uh, keep going. But uh, that's some of the, couple of the things that uh, I think of when I think about that is, uh, is gathering up at, at Dog River and uh, camping out there and uh, enjoying that. The steady influence in all of our lives, not just me, but my friends, me and my friends. He's been a friend to my friends. And uh, when we were on the dark side of life and the rebellious uh, nature was taking over in us, he was always there. He just tagged along. He was a he was a tag along. Uh, like I say, that many years difference, and uh, he he tagged along with us and uh, some of the things we did, and uh, most of them I've forgotten, but uh, I know he was there.
<laughs> uh, a funny story about the gumbo is uh, we were getting together. I'm not sure whether it was Thanksgiving or Christmas, but uh, we were at Mark's house and uh, he was living down on Celeste Road at the time. And probably, I can't remember how we all were back then, but I know I was already married. And uh, Barbara and I decided to make some gumbo and she's got my grandmother's recipe and really knows how to make it. But uh, we got a hold of some crab meat or something that didn't, wasn't just exactly right. And uh, we made that, she made that gumbo and, uh, and uh, we took it to the family gathering at Mark's the next day. And uh, that gumbo stunk and nobody would eat it. And uh, our family has never held back an opportunity to make fun of something. And uh, I, Mark was right in there with the rest of them, uh, holding their nose and laying out like they were dead. And, uh, and that didn't stop then. That went on for years. In fact, you can just mention gumbo right now, uh, 20 or 30 years later, and people will remember that and respond with lots of laughter, making fun of people. And uh, in fact, he and I make fun of people a lot. And uh, as Christians and pastors, we, we realize you're not supposed to make fun of people. And uh, one time Mark said he got convicted and uh, he uh, decided he wasn't gonna make fun of people anymore. And uh, I think that was one day, and the very next day he was up at the Dairy Queen in Citronelle, and a guy walked in with his shirt halfway unbuttoned with a big hairy chest sticking out, and Mark looked, pointed at him and said, Teen Wolf! And so the, the, uh, <laughs> the truth was over. So uh, <laughs> we, we make fun of people, but we do it in a good-natured way, and uh, we have a lot of fun doing it. Even the gumbo. Extremes he's gone to to help other people who that he may have known or may have known just vaguely. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind uh, he may be like me. In fact, I came across one yesterday the same way. And uh, the first thought in your mind nowadays, of course, is uh, somebody gonna knock you in the head if you stop and help them. But uh, no, I think beyond a shadow of a doubt, he would be one of those that would stop and help. The uniqueness of our relationship stems from the fact that I'm much older than him. He's younger than I am, yet he has all kind of been, those roles have been reversed in our life. Um, when we were really young, I was a mentor to him. He looked up to me, I'm sure, uh, as a sports figure and uh, all of that. But uh, as he, matured and uh, came to know Jesus and uh, was following Him, uh, it just seemed like our roles naturally reversed and He eventually uh, came into the role of being my mentor. And uh, ever since then, I have, I have looked up to Him. I know that He's a person uh, that uh, is there when I need Him. 
Uh, our roles as pastors uh, makes it difficult for us to spend uh, time together anymore, except times when our families might get together. So he and I don't get together on a regular basis, but there's just a calming sense in knowing that if, he's, if I need him uh, for anything, uh, he, he will be there. All I have to do is call him. And uh, he, he just came uh, a couple of days ago to mine and my wife's 50th uh, wedding anniversary celebration at uh, Criola, at, at my church there in Criola. And we had a time of sharing uh, after, it, after the ceremony itself was over. And uh, Mark got pretty emotional, as uh, he and I both do pretty easily. And uh, he shared uh, that uh, early in his life, when his dad was had a drinking problem, that uh, he, his dad was never around and that I was always there. Uh, when he needed somebody to talk to. And, uh, and so that role, like I say, has been a strong one. Uh, but then I saw that role reversed as, uh, as he got older and uh, matured and began to follow the Lord wholeheartedly. Uh, he became my mentor. And uh, so that's just the kind of relationship we have even to this day. It's not really a story, uh, it's just that after I became a pastor, there's so many things. Uh, and of course, my, my real mentor, Brother Jim Allison, taught me uh, more than I could ever thank him for. But he's been dead for quite a while, so uh, Mark's kind of taken over and, and uh, filled in the gaps. And uh, uh, pastors do a lot of funerals, and uh, some of the best advice Mark's given me uh, was at funerals, and uh, I've been a was a United Methodist pastor for many years. Uh, since gotten out of that denomination, but uh, anyway, uh, some of their liturgy involved in some of the funerals and stuff uh, is pretty uh, stiff, if you want, want to put it like that. And uh, I was all concerned about uh, doing a funeral and having to follow the order that another pastor had, had laid out. And uh, Mark could tell I was concerned, so he, uh, he talked with me about it, and he, he told me, he said, look, the Holy Spirit can work through their liturgy just like he can uh, something that you and I devise, so just uh, don't worry about it and uh, just follow his lead. So that, along with a lot of other advice he's given me, has been, uh, uh, been something that I'll never be able to repay him for, for sure. learned anything from me it was how not to behave how not to do stuff back in the back in the 60s and uh, very early 70s but uh, I, I know I've learned from him what it means to be faithful 
as a servant to the Lord through all circumstances, you know, through every area of life. And uh, he's just been a, the kind of person that uh, you never questioned uh, where they stood. And uh, so that's the main lesson I've learned from him. And then, as we've already talked about, s several things in my ministry that uh, he's uh, either taught me by leading as an example or shared with me uh, some of the times that I've called him and asked for his advice on what to do in certain situations. It's been an invaluable source, not just of information, but also of inspiration uh, for me. And he's gone through a lot of tough times in his ministry. Uh, everybody does, every pastor does. And uh, he's been able to uh, weather the storm uh, and then it helped me in those same situations. He is the epitome of what the world calls a family man, but uh, his devotion to his wife and his children, uh, once again, through good times and bad times, uh, he's taken them in, uh, helped them out, uh, like most of us would, but uh, it just seems like uh, he's just always been there uh, for them. Uh, he's, he's, he's raised his uh, children and his grandchildren uh, in admonition and fear of the Lord. And uh, you can see it in each and every one of them in, the, in their walk, individual walks with the Lord. Mark's been a, a great influence in their life in that respect. That he's not only affected his own children and grandchildren, but the way he's dealt with all of them uh, has affected the rest of our family. I mean, he's just been a, uh, an anchor in our family when it comes to Christian values. Servant, Christian, dedication. And that's just, uh, that's what he's been his, uh, most of his whole life since he was a very young uh, boy when he gave his life to the Lord, uh, everything he did, has done, uh, has been tempered by that fact. And, uh, you know, bad times, good times, uh, bounty, uh, times of nothing. Uh, he's been faithful, and uh, he's one of the most faithful that I've ever known. I've often thought, you know, it's going to be awful lonesome, you know, but if this world stands and one of us leaves, I don't, I don't, I don't know who's first, but, but uh, the one, the ones left will be lost. I sincerely believe, because I know words, I can't put in words what it would mean to me should I lose Mark, and I know he feels the same way. I just, I just love him that much, and thought a lot of times about, I was talking about Alabama football and should one of us leave before the other. I don't know. It's going to be awful hard on both of us, no doubt. I don't know how we could get through a, a service, a funeral, because it's, 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 it's going to be hard. It, as hard as, as anybody I've ever lost. And that's, that's really saying something of losing the people that 
that I've lost, but he just means that much to me. Turn again. Oh boy, oh boy, I'm telling you, uh, we're living in the hour that we need to be jumping stumps for the kingdom. Paul said uh, he thought he'd be there. He said, hey, the dead in Christ going to rise first, that we which remain going to be caught up. Uh, he was so intent and urgent because of the hour. And tonight we need to be urgent. In another word, we need to be intentional. We need to be intentional about this gospel. We need to be intentional about souls being saved. Uh, I'm telling you, waking up in the morning intentional for the things of the gospel, the things of the Lord. We appreciate you so much. God's going to, uh, he's going to, uh, in his presence, his fullness of joy. You're going to leave this place tonight, not just with joy, but with strength, because the joy of our Lord is our strength. Uh, you're going to leave here stronger than you were when you came in. We're all working together. There's several different churches involved here tonight, different ones coming from different places. We appreciate you. And I want to tell you, it's just like one. Don't feel like it's a bunch of churches. Feel like the body of Christ. Well, that's what it's about. Give the Lord a good break.